This is the plaintiff, Mary McIntyre. She says she paid the defendant to paint a couple of rooms in her house. But she fell right before the job was supposed to start and broke her ribs. She told the defendant to hold off for a couple of days before she started the painting job. When she tried to reschedule with the woman, she was ghosted. So she wants her money back, but the woman said she's already spent it. Huh? She's suing for $1,000, the amount she paid the defendant. This is the defendant Aurelia Alvarez. She says the woman tried to cancel on her the very day she was about to start the job. She took her 1000 deposit and purchased supplies and paint for the job. And deposits are non-refundable just because someone has a change of heart. If anyone's owed money today, it's her. She's accused of getting painted into a corner. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,200, the remaining balance on the job. All parties, please, as you're ready. Right Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, okay, Ms. McIntyre, you are suing Ms. Alvarez and her painting company for $1,000 that you gave her as a deposit for a job that she didn't end up doing. You have a counterclaim against her for $1,200 for the balance of the job because she prevented you from doing it. Let me hear first from you, Ms. McIntyre. Yes, I hired um, her because of uh, do some paint work for me in my home. You hired her to do some paint work for you in your home? Yes, mm -hmm. and um, she's going to do my uh, living, my kitchen was all one room, living room, dining room, and then my bedroom and small area in the hall, very okay. small. Was she going to paint your cabinets too? Oh, yes, kitchen cabinets. In the okay. kitchen, I should have said. Well, Sorry. I know, but sometimes yes. that could mean the kitchen walls and not the cabinets. Yeah, so that's she was true. also going to paint your cabinets. All, all the kitchen, the cabinets okay. and the walls. Okay. And um, a couple of, a couple of days went by, or a day went by, two days went by, and it was on well, store. What, what price did you guys agree on? 2200 All right. And then you gave her a deposit? Right, $1,000. I think okay. it was 22 or 21 And she was supposed to start work in the beginning of October. Right. And then you the texted her and told her. Right, I broke my arm. I was still unpacking because I just moved there. And so I went to reach in my um, wardrobe box and I broke my ribs. Ooh, how did that happen? And because uh, well, I'm short, instead of tipping the box upside down, I leaned in and I heard a crack. And oh, and, so and, and the edge of the box care. hurt you? Oh my goodness, okay. And uh, my bones are soft. Yeah. So I went over to urgent care and so then I text her next day or called her and, and I asked her if she could hold off until the following week and she says uh, okay okay so I text her back probably about four days five days later and um, I says uh, I'm okay if you want to come and tolerating the pain and if you want to come pain she says well I can come Wednesday I said that's good but Thursday I have an appointment with the doctor and she says, so I think that put her off. So I don't know why she couldn't come Wednesday and Friday, but she says, well, well I'll that, get back that's to That's hard you. for her to do a job on Thursday then, um, if she has right, to sandwich. But, but anyway, whatever, so yeah. go on. And so, um, well, whenever she said, I'll get back to you. Well, after a couple of days, she never got back to me. Okay. So I called her and I said, and everyone said, she charged me too much money. Oh, wait, so you oh, skipped that part. Now. So you spoke she's... to your friends, and your friends said she's charging you too much money. And my son. And I your forgot, son. Uh, she texts me and says, I forgot to include the paint. And you, I she says, forgot to include what paint? The next day, she texts me. She said the 2200 was not including paint. I don't think that's what she texted you because I saw the text. Hold on. Yeah, the next day. She... It was it was a specific paint, like the paint for the cabinets or something was what I saw. But hold no. on. No. Um, I forgot to add the paint for the cabinets and also get the blue you want. We can go over that on Wednesday morning. What does that mean? We were supposed to go over that that, that Wednesday morning on the blue that she wanted. Um, as far as that, the only thing I did not include was the one gallon of paint that she needed for the cabinets. And that would have been an additional $55. Had she said, I'm not going to pay for that, I would have came out of pocket with that because that well, was Well, frankly, you should have anyway. Like, you shouldn't even be saying, oh, I forgot to include it. If you forgot it, that's on you, you know? And that is true. All right. But in any event, does she say, what do you mean it's going to be more? I'm pulling out? No, I said... No, she says, I'll pick up the paint myself. I'll go with Sherman Williams myself tomorrow. 
So you weren't referring to all of the paint. Correct. You were just referring to the cabinet paint? Correct. Just one gallon of Yeah. Did you realize, I think you misunderstood her text. She said, I forgot to add the paint for the cabinets. No. Look at it. It's right there. I'm showing it to no, you. No, I mean, I probably did. No, I don't mean that no, way. No, right, right. I mean, um... Uh, you misunderstood. Yeah. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm... I'll pick up the paint myself. I'll go to Sherman Williams myself tomorrow. Can you hold off still next week, Monday or something? I broke my rib. Oh, so you were still going to do it even after you said that. She didn't say, go away, forget it. Right. Oh, my God, if we hold it off... It will be the week after next week. I really appreciate it. I'm in so much pain. Blah, blah. You're still, you know, talking about what day. Let me confirm. I'll let you know. We're early birds, not before 8. Okay, we usually do 8 to 3. Good. I like it. I like it. It you could drop of May check. I am not going to have my house paint right now. So I think what she's trying to say to you I is, could you please drop off my, return my check to me. Correct. The che this is October 15th. The check was given to you when? October 10th. Yeah. And she had contacted me and told me that she would. As soon as they, the, con um, the customer gives me the, the deposit, that's when I secure my paint, especially the fact that we haven't had full, um, the paint supply isn't full there. So as soon as I get a deposit. Had you actually bought the paint already? I had already bought it. Do you the have paint. the receipt for that to show me? Unfortunately, I do not. If you don't, the plaintiff says she hired the defendant to paint her house, but can never agree on a start date and she wants her dough back. Defendant says the woman tried to cancel on her the very day she was supposed to start the job and she'd already bought the supplies. Let's listen. Your position, I take it, Correct. is I had a contract and she breached. Correct. And now her position is, but you didn't do anything. Correct. And what do you say to that? Well, when she... Well, actually... what you say is I bought the paint, but I can't prove it. No, I actually offered to go whenever she was ready, but she started to say that I was charging her too much, and that's what usually happens. They, yeah. they look they around. They talk to somebody. They don't do, people don't do their research beforehand. Correct. They ask, why did you ask your son beforehand, does 2200 sound good to you? Huh? I never said to her, I, you charged me too much. I just said, never mind, bring back my check. No, she started to Yeah, say we'll here. talk about whether you can do that in a moment. Oh. But my question to you is, you testified a moment did, really. that you spoke to your son after agreeing to her price. Why don't you speak to your son before you agree to someone's price right. and say, right? Okay. I've already purchased the paint. I've cashed the check and I'm ready to come paint. How would you like to handle this? Remember, we were supposed to paint since last week, so I've been prepared since last week. And you respond, I said right after you said you did not include the paint. And right after I said, I'll buy my own paint. Ms. Mary, that is not what we agreed on. Otherwise, I would have not went over the color with you. And that's the end of the discussion. Do you, do you ever try to talk to her? I did. I went to her home. Um, I think it was a couple days later, two, three days later. And when I, when I get there, I knock on the door, and she opens the door. What do you want? I said, well, I wanted to talk to you. And she says, I don't need to talk to you. You'll just be hearing from my attorney. OK, oh, I walked away. That didn't go so well. All exactly. Right. All right, so Ms. McIntyre, here's the issue we need to decide. Did you or did you not have a verbal contract? Because verbal contracts are enforceable. Yes, I did, Your Honor. All right, and then you changed your mind on the verbal contract. Yes, you want to... So did, why um, should you get your money back? She should be... In other words, the other side... A contract is where two sides give up something. You're giving up... 2200 and she's going to paint your house. And then after you have this, bi a, a verbal contract is binding. And, and not only, it's not like we're debating whether you had a verbal, you admit you had a verbal contract, you gave her the $1,000 deposit. And she was ready, willing, and able to do it, and then you broke a rib, and then you delayed her, and then she gave you another date, and then, and then out of nowhere you decide, I shouldn't have entered into this contract, so I want my money back. And how do I release you from the obligation that everybody who enters into a contract has to abide by it. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says the defendant is ghosting her. She's had it and she wants her money. But the defendant claims that you can't just go around and change your mind and expect all your money back because she's the one who's out. Let's go back into the courtroom. Did you end up hiring someone else to do it? Yes. And what'd you pay that? He charged me a thousand dollars. And well. on your honor, and when he was there, she came by my house with her boyfriend, her son in the back seat on a truck, red truck, and blowing the horn and bullying me. How did she bully you? I did and, not. Uh, did, they, did you said, blow the horn? The, I did not. Okay. The painter said to me, "I wish I could. If I knew I could have brought him, I would have." I said, "She's just trying to intimidate." Why would you not know that you could bring a witness to court? No, because I said no witness. We told you you couldn't bring a witness? No, that's what I thought it said. Okay, all right, and, go uh, on. 
He says uh, she's just trying to intimidate you. She's just immature. Don't pay attention to her. Okay, well, that's fine. So, so we'll hash it out in court. We can hash it out in court. Right. And here's how it goes. When you enter into a contact, there are consequences. I can't just tell her after you've wasted all her time picking out colors, and I don't know whether she bought the paint or not. Truly, that's... I don't think it hinges on that. She can't prove she bought the paint. She says she actually bought the paint. Painters can always return on open paint. Um, Cause it's not- Actually untinted, you cannot. And she had selected the color and I had already had it tinted. Oh really? Yes. Oh well, I hope you can use it somewhere else or you can, can I'll give you another chance to prove that you bought paint. Okay. Come on, let's see it. I want, I don't- Oh, have you're it. still unprepared. Okay. <laughs> but in any event, it doesn't matter because she's entitled to make the profit. You right. cheated her out of a profit that she was gonna make on a job. And when she takes your job, she doesn't take other jobs. And, and, she, and not only that, in this case, she saved a day for you and you couldn't do it. And then she saved another day for you. And, and you deprive her of an opportunity to earn her livelihood. She doesn't have to return the deposit. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. You have a counterclaim against her for $1,200, except you didn't paint the place. So what correct. you're entitled to is your profit margin kind of thing. So if you want $1,200, show me proof that you brought, bought paint that you cannot return. I'll give you a third opportunity to do it. And the answer is you can't, okay? So on your counterclaim, zero. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Well, once again, we have a zero-zero tie here in the People's Court. Nobody gets anything. Let's see what Ms. McIntyre, the plaintiff, is going to have to say to us. Ms. McIntyre, I think you learned a little bit in court from the judge today, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, you can stick by a contract. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And, and that a verbal contract is enforceable. Right, there. Yeah. So you don't get your deposit back? No. Nope. What okay. are you going to do? Live but, and learn. But it's already been finished now, right? The right. job? And I assume you're happy with it? Oh, yeah. I found a very lovely gentleman. They took her name off the off our place. Okay. So she's no longer welcome there. Oh, really? Yeah. No longer welcome. That's yeah. tough. Okay. Thank you. You, dear. you don't fool around. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very dear. much. Bye-bye. All, right. All right, Ms. Alvarez. And you don't get anything because you didn't have proof, you that know, evidence. You need evidence in court. That's okay. You ever watch the people's court? I do. I do watch it all the time, but I, that's all right. I'm okay. You're okay? Yes. All right. Good enough. Thank you very much. Have a good all day. All right? Thank you. Thank you. And that'll do it, Harvey. What do you think? You know, it's really interesting, Doug. People think, okay, you cannot cancel a contract if you signed it. Here's the reality. You actually can. You can cancel a contract even if you're not entitled to do it. Uh, the rub, obviously, is that you have to bear the consequences, which means you have to pay for the damages that the other person suffers as a result of your conduct. If you retain an attorney to handle a case for you and he quits before it's finished, what can you do to get the money back? You've seen this type of All disagreement time. many times. I've seen it when I was on the bench as a judge. Um, just like uh, there's disagreements about whether a contractor has really finished the work, there's disagreements about whether an attorney really has. Sometimes the attorney bails on the case, perhaps, and really obviously left a lot of work to be done. Other times, there's disagreement. The attorney would say, yeah, I, look, I got him the judgment. We, the case is over. And the client is like, well, you said you'd, you would file the judgment and you would pursue collection of the judgment for me. And that's what I paid for. You never know how they're going to disagree on this. Or, but there are a lot of paths you can take. Right. To, and, then, and if you're paying by the hour... Right. Um, there are bills that come up every month Absolutely. for the hours that were spent then. If you right. stop paying, they'll stop working right. um, because they right. demand to be paid for those hours. And right. so it'll be the middle of the case, and you can't say, yeah, you got to work for free for the next right. year. That's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So Lawyers it depends on who's them. right. If you agreed to a fee. To oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Where's everybody? Meryl, and I told you to keep that a secret. Jeez. All right. Thank you, everyone. You even spelled my name right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.